Here is some testimony from Abraham Perkins of Hampton, New Hampshire. One evening in November 1662 while he was walking by the home of goodwife Eunice Cole he heard two voices in conversation. Goody Cole had been widowed earlier that year, so he was curious who was talking with her at night. He paused near her house and listened. I heard a discoursing. And, hearkening, I heard the voice of Eunice Cole and a great hollow voice answer her, and the said Eunice seemed to be discontented with something, finding fault. And the said hollow voice spake to her again in a strange and unworldly manner. As if one had spoken out of the earth or in some hollow vessel. Perkins was disturbed by this, so he ran and brought two friends back to her house with him, the three men stood outside and heard more strange things. We three went to her house and hearkened, and heard the said Eunice Cole speak and the said strange voice answer her diverse times. And the said Eunice Cole went up and down in the house and clattered the door to and again, and spake as she went, and the said voice made her answer in a strange manner. And there was a shimmering of a red color in the chimney corner. That testimony sounds like something from a horror novel or a very dark fairy tale. The great hollow voice is creepy enough, but the shimmering red color is the perfect ending to Perkins's account. In addition to dealing with infernal forces, Goody Cole also supposedly had a penchant for stealing children. Well, at least she tried to steal children, but they always got away. Here is testimony from Sarah Clifford of Hampton, who claimed in 1673 that Goody Cole tried to steal away nine-year-old N. Smith. And then the child told her that there came an old woman into the garden with a white long t-shirt and a brown cap and a white apron and a brown neck cloth and took this girl as she told us by the hand and carried her into the orchard and threw her under a pier main tree. And she was asked to live with this old woman, and she said if she would live with her she would give her a baby and some plums. Quoted in David Hall. Witch hunting in 17th century New England, 1991. Young and Smith refused Goody Cole's offer. In response, Goody Cole threatened to kill her and then allegedly struck her on the head with a rock. The girl said that Goody Cole then turned into a dog, climbed a tree, and flew off. Goody Cole was a childless elderly widow. Maybe she really did want the little girl to come live with her. Maybe the encounter did turn violent. But did she really turn into a dog and fly away? The testimony is a mix of the realistic and the fantastical, like Hansel and Gretel, set in coastal New England. In 1657 eight people drowned when a small ship sank in the Hampton River. According to tradition Goody was to blame, and the incident was popularized in a poem by 19th century poet John Greenleaf Whittier. Even after she died in 1680 the strange stories about Goody Cole continued. Legends say her body was buried at a crossroads to keep her from causing mischief after death the citizens of Hampton drove an iron stake through her heart. Just to make sure the magic worked they also placed a horseshoe on top of her as well. But it's hard to kill a legend or a fairy tale. In 1938, as Hampton celebrated its tricentennial, several people claimed to see Goody Cole's ghost walking through the oldest parts of town. The town posthumously pardoned her for being a witch that same year, 